Okay, so now we're going to move to the second part on our Proxon 250 lathe. And what we're going to do is turn threads. So basically, uh, I always 3D print these little trays to help me hold my tools. I've got one here for my gears. I've got one here for uh, my milling bits um, and uh, tailstock bits and so forth. But basically, the Proxon lathe includes all of the gears to thread metric um, threads. Uh, you need to buy separately the, the bits for uh, threading imperial threads. But so what we're going to do is just re you can refer to the manual or you refer to the one page document when you buy the gears to turn imperial threads uh, in order to see how you would go about setting up your gear ratios. So I'm not going to go into that too much because it's really self-explanatory reading the manual. It doesn't take much time at all. Um, but what, what I am going to do is just sort of show you how uh, I'm going to set this up for a 1024. Uh, so we're going to open up the side here. I already have all the gears already in place. So we've swapped out uh, an 18 tooth gear on the main uh, drive. Uh, and then we've swapped out the necessary gears in order to achieve a 24 inch thread. So now what we have to do is a couple different steps. One is we need to apply our belt so that we can connect um, the translation stage over through to uh, the drive. So what you're going to do, uh, just basically place that belt on, and then you don't you want it to be snug, but not too snug, so that it's uh, that it's putting too much tension on the belt. And then you just want to tighten that down in place. The other thing you want to do is uh, oppose from cutting aluminum, which is done at a high rate of speed. When you thread, you want this done at the lowest rate of speed as possible. So we want to actually move our drive belt over so that we can achieve uh, a low RPM. So basically our smallest gear from the, the electric motor itself. And then we want to be in our biggest gear in the back so that we're spinning at a slow but easy rotation. So you get a lot of torque, but the chuck is turning at a slow rate of speed. So that's all you do is you move that belt over just like that. And we're going to remember to just turn the RPM dial way down on the lathe itself. And that way we'll, we'll actually just get a tiny, tiny bit of motion. Now, I haven't moved the starting position from where we stopped cutting it last time. Uh, I did do a little bit of a chamfer off the front. Um, so I, just, I did just kind of want to check, but basically it looks like we're in the, at the same location. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and zero this on the compound. This is all tight now. I've got that bolt tight. I've got this belt tight. We're going to close it back up. I'm going to adjust my focus on the camera just to make sure. Uh, we're in the right area here, and then I'm gonna just give give you a little bit more detail on the camera. Here we go. Okay, so let me back out just a little bit just to show you how to set up the compounds. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your your tooth cutting tool uh, is close to where you want to make your first cut, uh, and then you want to zero it. And likewise, um, with your, your compound up here, you want to zero this compound. This is the one that's going to be doing all of the advancing for, for the tooth cutting. So what we can do now, um, without engaging the translation stage to connect to the drive, we have it off. That's this lower knob down here. What we can do is go ahead and turn it on. We just want to check our tailstock, make sure that's still in a good position. Um, turn the power on. And sometimes it helps if you just grab um, a marker here. So what we can do is grab a marker. We'll turn on, turn on the lathe. And if you could just black this out, one thing you'll do is when we start cutting, you'll actually get to see, um, sorry, I have a very tiny Sharpie, only fine point, I don't have a broad point. But basically what you'll be able to see is, is, um, is uh, the, the first initial cut. It'll cut right through the area that we've marked here on the metal. And then you can see uh, your progress because this is a, a multi-stage process in order to get these threads in here. Okay, so that's all blacked out now. All right, so what we're gonna do is get ready to make our first cut. The power is still on. What we wanna do is go ahead and turn this knob here to engage translation. And then what we wanna do is just check. Uh, we just wanna go ahead and make our first pass. It's likely not gonna touch but just to sort of check our starting point, it's close to a starting point. So we're just going to turn it on here. Yeah, so we're pretty much exactly where we, where we cut down the bare metal. So we're just going to bring it back. And in order to make our first cut, what we're going to do is just advance 
the top compound up by one tenth of a millimeter. We'll turn it back on and now you can start to see a very very thin piece of metal. Let me zoom in if I haven't already. So basically what it did is it just made a very small cut and um, that's exactly how you want it for your first cut. You want a very clean uh, small amount of material to be removed and then what you want to do is reset it. So what we're going to do is just back out our, our bottom compound, move it back to its starting position and then we want to zero it again to make sure it's in the exact same place and then we just want to advance our compound again by just another tenth. You can start to move it a little bit more once you get a good foundation down but for now just we're just going to go one tenth at a time. We'll turn the lathe back on. Now you see we're getting another, another really really nice cut. We've got a great thread pattern already starting here. That's 24 inch. Again we're going to back out our bottom compound. Bring it back to its start. And now what we're going to do now that we have a good foundation is just kind of move it one tenth of a millimeter or sorry two tenths of a millimeter at a time. So take a little bit more material off. Go ahead. Now we need to take it back to zero. If I haven't already. I actually can't remember if I did so what I'm going to do is just sort of back it to zero and just check. Confirm. Yeah no I didn't. So again it's important to stay focused. It's a little bit tricky when you're recording a video but there we go. So all the steps are back in place. We're going to go ahead and do our, our pass. So mem remember, this is a little bit of a deeper cut. You can see a little bit more material. And just to kind of check that that's not too much material at a time, uh, it's good to go back and without advancing the top compound at all, just do another pass. Uh, if it's cutting off more material, then it's likely there was some back pressure and you've gone too deep. Yeah, so we're getting a, a very, very thin amount of material, so maybe we won't go quite that, that far. So what we're going to do is take it back to the starting point. And rather than advancing uh, two tenths of a millimeter at a time, we're going to advance, um, I'm sorry, four tenths of a millimeter at a time, we're going to advance three tenths of a millimeter at a time. So that's three tick marks on the upper compound, back to zero, and now we'll start and proceed with our cuts. So as you can tell, this is basically the process. It's a bit redundant, a bit repetitive until uh, the threads have fully been cut. So what I'm going to do is, without talking too much during the length of this video, is I'll just speed everything up now that you have the gist of what it is that I'm doing. And now we have a good pattern, so again, three tenths. So one, two, three tenths. Uh, and I'll just start to speed up the video until we get to the end. Um, and I'll show you what you need to do to clean, clean up the end. All right. Okay, so this is a good place to kind of stop and check. You can see that all of the Sharpie that we drew on here, all the black area is pretty much gone. But sometimes what can happen is the aluminum can warp outward. So you get a little bit, um, you know, a little bit more uh, width than it is that you're after. And remember, we're after about 4.8 uh, millimeters. So right now it's at 4.91. So whenever we advance the compound, what happens is the aluminum gets so thin that it starts to pinch and a little bit actually gets drawn out. So we want to shave off about one-tenth more material. So we can achieve that again, um, just advance the compound back to zero. Um, we, would, we just want to advance our compound one-tenth. So you can also see, um, so if you notice I'm not advancing the top compound at all, I'm really just taking it back to its starting point. And that's because any material that's getting extruded out to broaden my diameter is actually getting cut off uh, in further passes. So that's pretty good. That's basically right at 4.8. So now what we're going to do is uh, just chamfer in our edge and then we're going to chamfer the tip and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to prep the rest of the um, outer, outer surface of the material to achieve our 40 millimeter length post. Okay, 
So in order to do that, you no longer want your drive belt on, so we're going to disengage the gears to, um, to place threads. We're going to kill the power quick, open up the box, and we're going to remove the belt. You just kind of zoom out here so you can see. But we're going to go ahead, we're going to remove this belt here so that it's no longer driving these gears. Set that to the side. And then what we're going to do now is adjust our drivetrain belt to achieve a high RPM once more. Okay, now we're going to set it back up. We want to just sort of back away our cutting tool. And now we're going to use our left hand cutting tool. Uh, and we just want to make sure that our RPMs are turned all the way back up to where they should be. So that is how you basically place um, your initial threads. Actually, before, before I cut this video, there's one task I'm almost forgetting. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and turn the power back on, leave our, leave our thread cut tool here. We'll go ahead, we'll turn it on, and again, we're going to place a notch just before the point to clean up any of the, the back area threads. And then we're also going to sort of just chamfer the front so that it screws into our, our rotary stage nice and simple, nice and easy. So we're going to turn it on. Just going to lightly touch and clean up the back side of the threads. Move it back to the beginning. Clean up the front side. Okay. Beautiful. All right, so now we have a perfect 1024 thread, and we're going to uh, continue on with uh, cutting the rest of this post.